Playboy, you, you, we have to learn how to overcome offenses. I said last week that one of the most difficult obstacles that a believer will have, one of the most difficult and um, to, to overcome and face is being offended. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 10, then many will be offended, many will betray one another, and will hate one another. Um, now that was, that was part of his response to disciples asking him, Lord, what will be the signs of the time? How will we know when it's getting close to you coming? And he said, many, how many? Many. Many, many people will be offended. Offending, offense will be very pervasive. It will be, it will be so pervasive that it's almost um, unrecognizable because it's like normal. And then he said that uh, many will begin to betray one another and many will hate one another. And so that goes along with us in Second Corinthians chapter, uh, Second Timothy chapter three. It talks about in the last days, all these things would be happening. The the behaviors of people would start shifting. People used to love and care for one another, and all a lot of that's going to shift. And of course, we we're, we see that even in the time that we're living in. So, uh, but Jesus tells us that this is going to be something that's going to really, really um, be a problem. And so. I said a couple of things, but one of the things I said, that when we allowed ourselves to be offended and, and don't deal with it, allow ourselves to be offended and don't deal with it, then it, it becomes we're vulnerable now to the root. I don't think I said this last time. We're vulnerable to the root of bitterness. And I don't know if you've ever had a bitter person in your life, somebody you knew that was bitter. You just, it was just hard to be around them. And not only that, but offense, it opens the door to the devil. <laughs> when I'm offended, I, I, I actually give my power to the devil. He can't take it. That's why he's looking, he doesn't give him no place. He's looking for a crack. And offense is a trap. Let me, let me give you, um, I have a definition down here. I think I gave it to you before. Uh, where's it at? But it's, it's a trap. I had, to, I had the real fancy meaning. I thought I had it. I guess I don't have it. But anyway, it, it, it's from a Greek word uh, from like called scandalous, which means that it's, it's, it's a trap that causes you to, to go into a way that's, and stuck in a way that's um, caused you to, to impede your progress, cause you to fall, cause you to fall into a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Once you get in a trap, you're vulnerable to anything. I'll never forget the time I was in my garage, I guess doing nothing, and I was watching this uh, bug get caught in a spider web. Why are y'all laughing at me? Doing nothing. Yeah. You sitting there watching the bug in the spider web, that ain't, that ain't, that's the closest nothing you can get. <laughs> and so, but it was so interesting. I actually, after that, I went and looked up and, and got all the information I could about a spider web. But anyway, but this bug flew in that web, and man, those spiders came and had a field day. Because as much as the bug was trying to get out, the more he become entangled. And so that's the way offense, offense is a bait. It's a bait that's in a trap. Yeah. And so if Satan can get you to bite at an offense, you get in the trap. And the more you try to wiggle out, the more you come entangled and you're more vulnerable to the attack of the one who set the trap. And so um, Jesus said, it's impossible in, in Luke 17. We looked at that. He said, it's imp let's look at that again. Luke 17, 1. Go to, put that up there, please. Luke 17, 1. And he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offense should come, but woe to him to whom they come. So it's not a question of if it will come. He says it's impossible that it won't come. 
Now, Jesus said it's impossible. It's going, it's going to come. But yet, a lot of times when it happens, people are amazed. Like, oh my God, I can't believe they did that. They're amazed. They're like, oh, what a surprise. What a shock. No, it shouldn't be a shock. Jesus said it's impossible that it won't come. But what we have, and this is part of why I'm doing this, is we have to know, we have to know how to respond when they come. We need to know how to deal with it when they come because our very future could be at stake. And if I don't handle an offense right, I will, I will limp through life. And, and again, I'm vulnerable to that root of bitterness and I build a filter. And everything else, all of my dealings with people and everything in my life is going to come through that filter of offense. And if I don't know how to do it, we read in Matthew, Mark chapter 6 last time, Jesus said the offense, he went to minister, wanted to do miracles there, but he couldn't because the people were offended. So an offense will cut off what the Holy Spirit can do in your life. An offense can cut off the plan of God. An offense can cause people to lose their destiny. I don't think, I, there's nothing worse than find a, a bitter preacher. I don't know if you've ever seen one or heard one, but, but because the, the, some things happen, they got offended. And so now everything, even everything they preach comes out of, they spew out. The filter is, is laced with some kind of offense. You can spot them. I mean, I can spot them. Oh, he's he mad. He's been hurt. Yeah. And so we, wanna, we need to know, learn how to deal with it. But I want to just, I want to put it in your mind, the danger of it, so that you can be convinced that, you know, this, this is nothing for me to play with. So I want you to go with me to uh, Psalm 55, please. Hallelujah. Now, offenses, I'm going to try to be cool today. I mean, tonight. Because offenses can lead to other damaging emotions. In fact, before I go there, put, put uh, Matthew 24 back up, please. It says, many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. An offense can start like I'm mad. <laughs> and if it's not dealt with, it can turn into, you know what? I'll betray you. I'm, I act like I'm your friend. Remember we talked about you this Sunday. And, and I got to show you. Maybe, I think maybe next time I'll show you people in the Bible that got offended. I'll just give you a heads up with Judas. That offense with Judas, him betraying, that started when Jesus checked him on cause the lady with the, the oil and Judas like man we could have sold that yeah right Judas and Jesus said leave her alone and Jesus went oh you ain't gonna front me out in front of all these people are you oh okay alright I got something for you Jay I guarantee you human nature hasn't changed you know, I can't believe I can't believe he's on, he gonna pump me out in front of everybody like that. That's when it started. And he didn't check it. You can get offended and you're like, oh, you know, I can't believe it did it. Alright, okay, so but if you don't deal with it and you let it linger, it can turn to betrayal. You'll turn your back on somebody in the New York minute and people that trust you, you're like, mm-hmm, all right, take that. And then, if you don't check it, it'll turn to hatred. Yeah. Now you, now you spewing out everything you can against them, the very one that you was cool with. Wow. What caused friends to turn like that? They don't just turn like that. Right. <laughs> Boy, shoot. Yeah, and so, so if I don't deal with the offense, uh, that thing grows, and, and the, the devil is behind all of it. Right. And he'll instigate, instigate. And they did this too. And they said this too. And remember, they did this back in 97. It happens in marriages. First you start off, you're upset because, you know, he didn't call you to tell you he was going to be late. Okay. <laughs> well, it's the truth. 
It's starts from the fence. You're like, why aren't you calling me? I, I forgot. How are you going to forget to call me? Well, I forgot. All right. Mm. <laughs> it, it happens in marriages. It happens in families. It happens in churches. It happens in businesses. It happens, it happens wherever there's people. And if you don't check it, and it's everywhere. I want to just say this. I want to cost you. Don't let, don't let some offended person recruit you into their drama. You got to cut that off, right? They just cut it off like, oh, uh, I'm not going there with you. You can go in that tunnel if you want to, but I'm not going in there with you. And then, and then you got, you know, part of, part of edifying the body in love is to check them. Baby, you are, you are offended right now. The devil's using you. You don't, be, you don't sit there like, well, yeah, I understand. No, I don't understand nothing. I understand you're an offense, and if I don't check it, you don't check it, you're going to be in betrayal, and you're going to be starting hating everybody. Okay. Now, so it occurs in marriage, workplace, churches, businesses, offenses um, are bad. Go to Psalm 55, please. And I'm talking, I'm, I want to deal mainly with us, because offensive will imprison a Christian. It'll sever relationships. <laughs> Can I take a survey? Okay, don't raise your hand though. <laughs> Just raise the eyebrow. Just raise your left eyebrow. Uh, how many people here, you were, you were like close with somebody and you never imagined in a million years that thing would go sideways? You know what sideways is? Yeah, I mean, you never imagined that. You know, there's some, there's some people in your life right now, you, you just think it's going to always be like that. <laughs> some, some of them might be. I only got one person I really believe ain't going to never change on me. Well, two, three. <laughs> I can put them on one hand. I mean, that I sincerely, if they, if they change on me, I would, I would, I would act the fool up in here. <laughs> I mean, I would lose my mind. Y'all have to pray for me. I would. That's only about this many. I mean, no, no, I'm, I'm saying nothing about anybody else. But there's people you never thought. Some of you have children you never thought would do and say. Some of you, um, uh, you know, have some folks you, you know, you were married to. You never thought. I think I got a friend. They were made 32 years. 32 years. I mean, you think I'm like after 30 years? How, what? Where you, how can you mess that up? Offense. So, Pastor, you walk around, you don't trust people. And God, we trust everybody else, we thoroughly check out. <laughs> thoroughly. And we check out periodically. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take you somewhere. Psalm 55, look at the screen because I'm using New Living Translation. Most of the time, the ones closest to you or fellow believers hurt you the most. Look at what David said. It's not an enemy who taunts me. I can bear that. It's not my foe who so arrogantly insults me. I can hide from that. Instead, it's you, my equal, my companion, and my close friend. What good fellowship we once enjoyed as we walked together to the house of God. So, so he's saying, you know, we just sit on the same road. We don't have pews. We just sit on the same road. We just sing in the same group. We used to, we used to, we used to be, be, we used to usher together. Yeah, we, we stood up together saying, I'm blessed, highly favored, and part of prosper. You're my friend. You, I talked to you in the parking lot. You know how we stay out there five, six hours after church? He said, you're my companion. You're my best friend. You're my bestie. Can't nobody hurt you. That's not close to you. The closer the relationship, the more severe the offense. 
I'm just getting you ready. But yeah, and I'm helping you understand, maybe you're in a place like now. I'm just having to, the closer the relationship, the more severe the offense. The greater the expectation of them, the harder the fall is. So that's normal. You, 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 know, you got to work through that. The closer the relationship, the greater the hatred for them. <laughs> for what they did. Anybody? It, it, never mind. So only those who care about you can hurt you. Now, I want to go to uh, Proverbs 18. Yeah. So Jesus said it's going to be, it's going to be prevalent. So we got, we got to prepare for it. That's what, that's what this is all about tonight. I got to prepare for it. I got to prepare for it. I, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. Thank you, Lord. Now look at uh, verse 19. It says, a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. Now, give it a shot. You got people that's offended. Give it a shot. Try to pull them out of it, but it's not going to be easy. <laughs> okay. Y'all here, y'all go home yet already. Yeah, give it a shot. I know people that's offended right now. And, and uh, uh, man, let's have some coffee. Let's talk about this. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, let's have coffee. I'll, I'll take your money. And we had a coffee and all that. <laughs> But, but, I, man, I, I'm, ooh, I, I got to watch it because people think I'm talking about them. That's another thing. <laughs> no, really, I, I get people, but they, they think I'm talking about, I ain't thinking about you. I ain't thinking about you. You're not, and you're not the only one dealing with stuff. Right. It's amazing how people sit out there, and even, even people online, why are you, why are you talking about me? <laughs> I, 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 that's why I don't even like to do a whole lot of count up for it. It used to be bad. Pastor, get up there, tell him my business. I would not tell him. You ain't the only one crazy in here. <laughs> doing that stuff, kind of that stuff is crazy. Some of that stuff is crazy. I said, you ain't the only one doing crazy. But, but, <laughs> he said, a brother offended is harder. And I'm, I'm trying to talk to you because if you're here and you're an offended right now, it can be done, but it's extremely hard. And you got to help them to the best of your ability to come out of it. But it's, it's extremely difficult. I think about, I got some family members. I'm going to look over this side. I ain't going to look over that way. <laughs> and for the life of me, I just don't understand. I'm talking about... Brother, sister, came out of the same mama, came out of the same daddy, lived, grew up in the same house, ate the same, out of the same grit pot. <laughs> and I can't believe they hurt relatives. No, because she is like so, like, y'all can't have the same parents. Okay. Like, she's so different. And I don't understand it. Can I just talk? Can I, you know what I'm yeah, okay. I ain't gonna use no names. <laughs> I can understand the hatred. Um, well, it's not hatred. It's not hatred. But the offense is so strong. They don't even want to. They don't even want to see each other. Offense will make you crazy. And this is stuff that happened 15, 20 years ago. And the, can you imagine the devil? It's like, shoot. This, it's crazy. It's harder. And, and she did her best. And, and then she said, you know what? All right, I'm done. Not done, but done trying to reason. A person offended. I call it temporary insanity. There's some stuff right in front of you. You're real sick. You're real sick. This might be the thing that can get the power of God through in your life. 
But you can get so offended, you can't even hear God. And there's people that still come to church, and they're so offended, that, but they, they, they go through the motions because, well, it's what I'm supposed to do. But I ain't hearing nothing. God can't even talk to them. They shut the wall. They, they closed it down. Why? I'm offended. Why? Why what? Why are you offended? You know, I don't. I can't even. <laughs> I'm not really sure why. Then the Bible tells, give the devil what? No, no place. place. Offense is an open door. Offense is like sitting down, having dinner, whatever he's throwing at me. I'm just going to eat it. And he, he comes in and he said, oh, thank you for the invitation. I'm not leaving until I consume what I came in here to consume. Offense is a trap. You got to get out of your feelings. Say that again, Pastor. You, you got to get out of your feelings. Your feelings, when it comes to this, you got to just get out of your feelings. Because if you don't, you go deeper and deeper. And, and, and it, well, different scripture. It can, it can migrate over across the line to betrayal. Now, you used to be trusted. Now, you can't be trusted. You used to speak good of me. Now you're speaking nothing but hatred. And now you're violating several laws, spiritual laws. Now God's like, I love you, but I got to watch you go through that because you're choosing. The Bible, how many of you know the Bible says, uh, I said before you, life and death, blessing and curse and choose life. I got to watch you because you're choosing death. Mm. Okay. So. So it's a lot easier to conquer a city <laughs> than to reconcile a brother who was offended. And sometimes we get offended over just minor issues. Just minor. You know, like if Usher said, hey, uh, can we just get you to move to the middle? I, I don't want to, I don't want to. Oh. Okay, then. Look, I came early. I came early to get this seat. I ain't moving. <laughs> no, it, it's little stuff. It's, it's little stuff. You know, it, it, minor things. Especially if, it, you know, it, it, it. <laughs> no, it's stuff like that. Mm. Okay. James chapter 3, verse 16. Now, offense is dangerous, and it can attract every evil spirit into your life. For where there's envying and strife, there's what else? And what else? Uh, uh, you didn't say that right. Every. Every evil work. With this envying, wanting something that somebody else has that doesn't belong to you, or strife, you just just contentious, just just quarreling, just everybody got the head away. He said, with this envy and this strife, confusion, there's every evil word. So do you know, because offended people, I told you, I gave you a profile of offended people, they, 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 they always got something to say, they always got a comeback. They rarely say, oh, I understand, no. No, they got something to say. You ever talk to somebody and you're trying to talk to them and, and maybe bring some loving, caring feedback and, and they, before you can get it out, they already shut it down and they got something to say or, 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 or here's, one that, here's a good one. This is offended person, signs of offended. Um, uh, you know, you know I, I, okay, let's just say we pretend in here. You know, um, I, would, I would like it if, if, you know, when you got off the bed, you wouldn't pull the cover off of me. Off me. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> well, it's not true because she never gets out before me, rarely, unless I take something. 
you know. I don't start taking something. I, I knock. I knock myself. S simply sleep. The little things from Tylenol. I, when I need about ten hours, I take two of those. So I do. And so she gets out. But but I'm just saying that. Let's say you know. Uh, I'm appreciative. You know, if you didn't pull the cover off. You know, of me when I'm asleep. Before I get that. Well, let me tell you what you do. <laughs> you ever talk to somebody like that? All you're trying to do is just say, well, and then they run down 10 things of everything you do. That's an offended person. They didn't hear a word you said, because the minute you said, Can I, I need to tell you about, they already, brrr, they loaded up. It's a semi-automatic. <laughs> offended person. You ever talk to people like that? You're just trying to tell them, look, look, I, look I ain't, I, I'm, I'm, your, I'm, not, I'm on your side. I'm your friend. But then they come back with, because, so they ain't, they ain't not hearing that. But he said, well, there's envy, strife, confusion. You have just, husbands and wives, husbands and wives, you have just opened the door. You have just, the, you fussing over, they let the temperature on 75 instead of 72. <laughs> and you fussing over three degrees. Three degrees. Three. Three degrees. You know, there was a singing group called Three Degrees. <laughs> I wasn't going to sing the song, but I just, I just did it in my head. And so, there people get, there people, there people that are fussed. There's husbands and wives, Larry, that are fuss over three degrees. You know, like Instar gonna send you, like your bill gonna go up seven hundred dollars <laughs> over three degrees. But, but now that y'all fighting, you just open every door to what? Every evil work. So you gotta think. You know, somebody needs to sit down and say, "Do we listen? Do we want all this evil work in here?" An offense can do that. Offense, an offended person won't just say, oh, okay, baby, I got it, I got it. Okay, uh, 75. But an offended person won't do that. They'll come back with all kinds of stuff, and now you way, it was three degrees. Now you way over here with all kinds of stuff, and you just open the door to what? Every evil work. So whoever in there, the kid, innocent, bam, tack them. Bam, tack, tack finances. Bam, tack this. To every evil work. <sighs> mm. And then somebody needs to sit down and say, look, look at what we allowed in this house. I guarantee you, anybody, you know, you know, anybody, any any relationship where there's where there's strong contention, you can you can't go two days. If you can't go two days without having peace. You need, you need to, you need to, somebody, y'all need to sit down and, and, and go back like, okay, look, look at what we allow to come in the house. Look at what my stubbornness and your stubbornness allow to come in here. Now, you know, I was talking about in prayer. Now, we're praying for breakthrough. We're praying for breakthrough. Uh, and I think when we're praying today, I said, you know, we need to pray, God, give me wisdom. Show me where, I, where, where I've erred. That's what Job said. Lord, show me where I've erred. That thing, see, see, that, that time, you know, sometimes there's some things you have to wait. I believe I receive and you shall have. But then there's some things where, okay, wait a minute, this is too long. I just, this is too long. I don't even feel like I got a connection. Now, I know we're not going by feeling, but, but you have to, and, and if, you're, if there's contention, if there's strife in the house, you don't even have to pray, Lord, show me. All right. Get your questions ready. <laughs> but no, I mean, think about it. It's, it's, somebody needs to man up or woman up and say, okay, you know what, let's cut this. Wow. Every evil work. Every evil work. Huh. All right. Let me... Hmm. 
I want to take my time with this and make sure. Okay, yeah. I want to go to. Uh, let's go to Second Timothy, chapter two. Now everybody in here is going to suffer offense, but I tell you what, everybody in here is going to offend somebody else, either consciously. I'm probably offending somebody tonight. I don't know I am. I'm not trying to. But, you know, anytime you get up and talk, open your mouth for more longer than five minutes, you're going to say something that somebody's going to be offended with. And, um, you know, I, I, I'll tell you what, I vowed, man. I, I, you know, I, I stand here, I mean, I don't do this perfectly, but I can guarantee you, me and this sister here, there is not one envy, jealousy, strife, offense bone in our body. None. We don't even know. I'm serious. And you know, you may think, oh, I don't believe that. Well, that, you believe what you won't believe. I'm not going to agree with you. We both be wrong. So, <laughs> but no, I know too much. I mean, it's not worth it. I mean, I don't need to be jealous about somebody. I don't need to be, en envy means wanting what somebody else has. I don't need that. I'm too old for that. I'm too old trying to impress people. You don't like me? Fine. My brother say, Pastor, you got on a t-shirt? Yeah. I said, well, it's really not a t-shirt. It's a Tommy Bahama V-neck <laughs> island shirt. But he thought it was a t-shirt. Frank, Frank, old school. Frank be like, <laughs> well, you know, old school cats like, what you doing dressing like that, class? <laughs> But no, but no, my, my point is, you get a certain point in your life, you, I, that's not, I'm telling you, I, if I wasn't a pastor, I wouldn't even be in folk business. But I'm like, that's your business. I don't even care. I care about you, but I don't care about your business. I got enough business myself. And so people bring stuff and they drama and, you know, we got to sit there and kind of, you know, no, what I mean is, you know, we, we got to try to help them. But I don't, you know, in the family, you know, oh. Uh, Oh, but, but we love everybody. You know, I don't even know how to say it. We just live life, man. We, I'm not mad at anybody. Somebody got more than me, God bless you. Somebody got less than me, God bless you. And we sleep good, except for when I got to take them things. Because I didn't get sleep. And that's normally on Saturday night because I, I, I only sleep a couple hours on Saturday night because I'm so geeked about Sunday. So I don't sleep, but on Sunday night, I take them things. I sleep all day, Monday. But I ain't, I ain't mad at nobody. You mad at anybody? No. We ain't mad at nobody. That's why I, I wish my we got high blood pressure. That's why we ain't in no medication. We ain't on no medication. None. We're good. We're happy. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not, I'm just saying, because I mean, because sometimes people go, oh, I know you, I know you burden. I ain't burdened with nothing. I ain't burdened with nothing. I, I deal with what I got to deal with. And, and then I would tell somebody the other night, I said, you know, you deal with it and then you cast it on the Lord. Okay, Lord, I'm going to sleep. You got this, right? Ain't no sense of both of us staying up all night. I'm really, I'm, and I got, we got challenges and problems like everybody else. But I ain't mad at nobody. I've, 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 I've asked God to take care of some folks. <laughs> Lord, uh, yeah, I know. Okay, you in 2 Timothy? We talking about you tonight, though. Okay, look at 2 Timothy because the devil used this thing as a tool, man. And if he can snare one of us through offenses, um, he can do some damage. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel. Be gentle to how many? Oh. Able to teach and patient. Mm. <laughs> Watch this. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. Let me, let me stop right there. You know, part of, part of my job... It's 
it's not, I don't, you know, I'm not all that fond of this part, but because, like I said, sometimes you got to get in folk business. Part of my job is to get in folk business when they're wrong and bring correction. And he said, you know, you have to be able to teach. But he also said, be patient. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition, that they may know the truth. Look at verse 26. That they may come to their what? Genesis. That they may come to their what? Genesis. So there's some people <laughs> that lost their mind. Some of the saints that lost, that lost their mind. They lost their minds. Because Paul talking to Timothy about how to pastor his church. And he said, you keep teaching and you keep correcting until they come to their senses. That's what folks are here tonight. You lost your mind. You lost your pure mind. <laughs> Is somebody, y'all listen to me. You know you lost your mind. Look at where you at right now. Okay, let me stop. And sometimes we act like folks don't lose their mind in church. You know some people in the body of Christ, in this church, other churches, that lost their mind. You know they lost their mind. I can't, you can't, girl, you girl, you crazy. Did you lose? Yeah. They lost it. And this is what Paul's saying. You keep ministering to them till they come to their what? Out of the hole pen. And then people got to be told, you wrong. You need to fix that, baby. The devil, watch this, watch this. Y'all ready? Oh, y'all looking at me like Jesus. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to read the scripture then. 26. That they may come to the what? And escape the what? Of a who? Devil. Having been taken what? Captive. By him for what? Jesus, Jesus. Now, a lot of y'all ain't got that one highlighted in your Bible. <laughs> But you need to because a lot of times people think, oh, I'm good. I'm good. Ain't nothing happening. And this is pretty, 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 pretty uh, clear. That they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. So there are people that are caught up. Offenses will take you into the trap. And if I don't come to my mind, I won't escape the snare of the devil. Now, he didn't just capture me. I'm not just captive. I'm captive for a purpose, for, his, for a reason. He wants to capture me, what? To do, his to do his will. He want me to get in the fence, get in the trap, so that he can dominate me control me, use me, use me to poison others, use me to, to bring division, use me to, to bring a confusion. It's all stuff with offenses. Mm. So, so when I'm getting in a strife with anybody or, or all of a sudden I'm angry, I have resentment toward a person. See, and I know this, you know, God got to help you with this one. Because I know there's no way you can say it or I can say it to where, and I'm sure people sitting here like, Pastor, you don't know what, what he did to me. You don't know what she did to me. You're telling me I need, to, I need to not be angry. No, be angry. Oh, y'all know the word. Be angry, but what? Sin not. Don't let yourself get caught in the snare. Because it's designed, you know, there's some people, I know some people, they, 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 they've been divorced for, gosh, you know, 20 years. And they're still acting like that dude or that person that they divorced from is still in their life. Let it go. Well, you don't know. I know, I know. But, but you, wanna, you don't want to get in the snare. 
And the other thing is, now you're cycling some of that energy you ought to be giving mama. And some of that love, all that energy, just, just, just reverse it, turn it into love. <laughs> turn some of that hate and that energy, give it, give it to her. Don't penalize her because you're still in the snare of somebody that don't even exist. You see how subtle he is? See, we give him, we give the enemy, when we get in, this, in the snare, we give him our power. We give him our power. And if, when you open the door to him, it's like you attract. Remember he said every evil work comes in. You ever have a, if you ever live in a place, I don't know, uh, Haiti. We, we went to Haiti. I've been, you know, we went to Haiti, and uh, well, I saw this. I saw this in New York City, though. Whoa, rats this big in New York City. I saw him carrying, carrying a pizza one night. <laughs> and Ken, Ken, Ken said, "Dad, look at that." I know, but I said, it's New York City. They're huge. But you ever go to a place? Where like Haiti and, and places in New York City, where it's trash, mess, not you know just a, okay. I don't know how I want to say it, but messy places, nasty places attract flies. It just attract all kind of. That's what. Yeah, I wish I had a picture of your face right now. But see, and that's the way we ought to look. See, when we open ourselves up to sin and open ourselves up to strife, division, we attract all the nastiness, flies, maggots. You ever seen maggots? You ever open some? Okay, all right. I know some of y'all got to eat tonight. Yeah, man, maggots and we attract, they attract. You ever have an open sore and, and you just see flies? Okay. But no, I want you, okay, I want you, that's how we attract every evil word, stuff we don't even sign up for, we attract. That's why he works so hard to get you mad, resentful, blaming other folk, not forgiving people. You should, okay, I'm going to stop in a minute. But, you know, and I, I, I love my woman, for, my, my wife, excuse me. <laughs> I love my wife for it because cause sometimes, you know, cause we all need help. And sometimes, you know, excuse me? Oh, okay, yeah. And so, and so, so we'll be talking, and then she'll like, she'll like, up! Oh! That means stop, shut up, cool out, change the subject. Over. Because if I open something up and all them nasty things come in, they come in on her too. She ain't trying to deal with no nasty. And then some of our homes are nice and, and pristine and, and, and palatious. Is that the right word, Jim? That's a good word. He's my English major. <laughs> you have these palatious homes, everything in place. Yeah, you have all the latest technology, but it's nasty in there. Oh, I'm not saying the health department come in and put an F on the door. But the environment is nasty. You got... I'm trying to paint a picture. So, so when you think about fussing and arguing, and then you'll be like, oh. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's just nasty in there. Then, then little, little, little Choo Choo ain't just barely walking, and, and he walk around like this. What's that? What's that, Daddy? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> All right, let me stop. I'm trying to paint a picture. I'm trying to paint a picture. And, and there's sometimes, see, sometimes, and I'm, I'm going to start with this, we're going to take some questions. And, and sometimes we're trying to figure out, okay, what's wrong? Okay, we, <laughs> now if you go to counseling, I'm not picking on you. But some people go to counseling and all that. And, and some things, are, I told you, I said this one Sunday, some things are spiritual. Yes. You, can't, you can't detect it. You know, he goes through his, his list and his, his troubleshooting. Wow. It, 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 they didn't teach that in school. That's Holy Ghost stuff. 
They didn't teach that in school. You can't pick that up on a test. What is it? It's something that I let in through this offense. Okay. All right. <sighs> okay. Um, I think I'll start with this next week, with this part here. Okay. I'm going to stop right here. You can stop the... Well, I don't know if y'all want to put it on the... Y'all want this on the tape? Hallelujah! Okay, why are you clapping? Was that helpful? Okay, um, how many of y'all text in a question? Anybody text in? Nobody? Okay. Anybody have a question? Okay. How many people have questions? Just one? Two? Three. Hand me a microphone, please. We didn't do. We, I want everyone to hear the question, so I don't have to repeat the question. And if you don't want to say it, uh, I'm going to allot. You can. Oh, I turned my timer off already. Um, I'm going to allot about ten, ten minutes. So, thank you. Okay, I have one question here. Isn't this cool? This is cool. I can't see who it's from, so don't worry about, if I don't know your number, I don't know, I, mean, I can find out who it's from, but <laughs> no, no, if it comes up here tonight, I, I, won't, I won't know who it is, so. All right. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this question, and then we have what, how many? Raise your hand again. How many questions? I saw. Okay, I thought I saw three. Okay, one, two. Okay, two. Praise the Lord. Okay, hmm. okay this person asks, what if you have to see the person that you're uh, offended with? You say, how you doing? <laughs> I mean, you, you, you act like, I mean, you speak to them, you act like them, you know, you don't invite them over for coffee or tea, but, you, you know, you, you act like it's all good. Hello? If they can handle it, if you can handle it. What if you can't handle it? Go the other way. Thoughts that are not spoken remain unborn. We're all going to have thought come to my I can't stand, I hate. Just don't speak it out, it won't be born. I mean, think about all the thoughts go through your head right now. Aren't you glad that those things ain't born? <laughs> yeah, so, so if you see a person, if a person comes up to you, um, you can hand her the, or hold the mic for her. <laughs> okay, so mine is similar to the one that was asked, but it's like, are we supposed to confront that person and, you know, just tell them, like, this is what you did and this is why I'm offended and I'm going to need you not to do that type thing? Or how are we supposed to correct that person from doing it again so we don't set ourselves up to get offended again? I covered that last week. Were you here last week? No, I had to take Oh, you had to take, okay, you weren't here. I talked about that last week. And I said that Jesus said, Jesus said, I said a lot of times we pray or, or we start telling everybody else when Jesus said, Go to them. And I, talk, I spend a lot of time talking about confrontation, that um, it's not always easy, but it's necessary. And that's the way God said to handle it. The saints got it. They always want the easy way out, well, most of the time. And even said one time, your offering, hold it, go make things right with your brother, and then bring it. So obviously, me not making things right can hinder my offering. So Jesus' thing is, go to them. And say, hey, you know what? You crossed the line with me. Tell them exactly what it is. I mean, you know, in the attitude of love. You know, don't go, don't go in your your other neighborhood attitude. 
say, I say, hey, you know, I really need to discuss this with you. You probably, you know, sugar it up a little bit. You're probably not even aware of this, but I just need to let you know. But isn't that a lie? What? Oh, well, no, if they know about it, don't, don't say that. But you can, you can, okay. Huh? Yeah, believe the best. I mean, if they didn't come back to you, well, anyway. But no, you, you have to go to them. You have to tell them. You cross the line, this is, unless I misread you or whatever, um, you, have to, you have to confront them. He said, if your brother trespassed against you, go to him. Don't, don't go to God and say, don't talk to me about it. You go to him. <laughs> and I, I, got a, I got a thing about this, you know, I, I learned, you know, don't make people read your mind. Last time we on the well, the Lord, the Lord is showing. No, you show them. Okay, is that suffice? Yeah, but I, I spent a lot of time on that last week. Confront them, huh? Okay, you you may get that CD free of charge. I'll autograph if you want me to. Okay. Okay, Pastor, but what if it keeps happening? What if it keeps the, happening? Yeah, yeah. What, the offense? Yes. Well, yeah. I would probably um, start regulating that relationship because they're disrespecting you now. And you got to value yourself enough. Okay, bro. Yeah. No, you have to value yourself enough to say, look, <laughs> I'm not a, yeah, whatever, however you say it. Yeah. Because some people don't get it. That's my nice way of saying it. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, yeah, that's some good. I, I'm good. That's a good answer, Pastor. You have to value yourself enough, enough. And you know, you've heard me say, sometimes you have to teach people how to treat you. Because they don't know. Because they're they going back, back uh, on past relationship. I'm not the one. Just let them know I'm not the one. Anyway, okay. Do you have a question? I thought I saw your hand. Let me t hand her the microphone, the camera lady. Y'all are doing good. Let me see if I have any more questions up here. Okay. What if you got offended but you didn't want to? So you're not meaning to be offended, but it's offense to you? Like, one time I went into tears and started crying, and I didn't even want to be offended. Is that something you have to go to the person and tell them, or if you can just let it go? I mean, you said to confront them so that it won't be a problem. Okay, you said you were offended, but you didn't want to be offended. Yes, sir. Okay, what well, like offended you, were, you? Defenses were... None were, of us want to be offended. I don't want to be offended. Yeah, but um, there's no real good reason to be offended. Well, you know, I'm not sure I understand... But sometimes, hmm, okay. I had a situation a couple of days ago where I was, I was, I was, I was, I think I was offended. And I told you, I remember I told you, I said, ah, I, got, I just preached this thing too, man. <laughs> I just preached that thing Wednesday, last Wednesday, and Thursday morning, Jesus. <laughs> Thursday morning, I said, I got to go to him. And then, but, but by the time I, I, I cooled down, <laughs> um, I'm like, you know, okay, I'm done with that. Yeah. It, was, it was like done. An offense is something that you carry, yeah. and you carry, and it bothers you. And when you start talking to other folks about it, like, okay, all right, wait, I need to go. But sometimes, some stuff you're like, okay, you know what, that, that is not even a game changer. Yeah. So it's not even worth. And sometimes you make it worse by going to somebody and they're like, well, what you talking about? So if you can, if you can avoid that, if it's not a bother, just let it go. Right. Can I have my microphone back? <laughs> All right, thank you very much. And I saw a hand back here, no? Huh? You changed your mind? She texted. 
Now everybody going to know it's your tech. <laughs> That's okay. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Lord. You're not the only one. I got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's see. Okay, Pastor, it's been 10 years since the offense. And it's from my in-laws that do not believe in God and I'm no longer with this person. Do I still need to confront the situation? If it's still bothering you, if it's bothering you, I don't care how long it is, you need, you need to confront it. If it's, if it's bothering you, it needs to be confronted because it will grow into bitterness. The, I'm, maybe I'm talking about that. The root of bitterness. And remember, that thing will escalate. The longer, if it's bothering you, the longer that it's, it's festered, the longer you deal with it, the stronger it grows. And, it, it's, and then you know what? And it will manifest at the most inopportune time. Yeah. And, and, you know, the devil is something. He, he, he'll wait till you climb, climb the ladder, and climb, and climb, and he'll wait till, you can, till, till your, your demise will impact the most people. Anyway. So, um, and, you know, and I'm giving these answers. I'm not the sum total of all knowledge and understanding. I'm close, but I'm not, I'm not there. Anymore. Okay, let's see what the next one says. Okay, Pastor, what if you know that the person who offended you did it on purpose and could care less that it happened? Yeah, you still confront them, and then that's their business, and then you release it and let it go. God, God got you, but the, and the way you keep the hand of God on your life is doing, what God, doing it the way God says it. That's a lot of folks don't like me, but I don't care. Because, I mean, I can't, and I, well, I shouldn't say I don't care. I can't change them. I can't change. But I got to do what God says. And, yeah, so that's my best take on that. Anybody want to add to that? Thank you. <laughs> I got all these junior preachers in here. Okay, Pastor, is it okay to cut that person off after? Would you like to expound on that? <laughs> is it okay? Is it okay to cut that person off after you have confronted them? Like, uh, who was that that said, if the person keeps doing it? Yeah. If they don't change and you don't want their friendship or it's, it's, it's too draining, cut that mug off. I mean, cut it off. <laughs> yeah, I don't need that. I don't need I, I'm t you know, the older I get, the more I'm, I'm simplifying my life. Amen. I'm simplifying my life, man. And I begin straight to the point. I didn't used to be like that. But I don't need anybody else's stuff. So, so yeah, uh, yeah, it's okay. I'm not, you know, it's okay. What if it's my hood? That ain't on here. Okay. Okay. How do you deal with an offense if you go to the person and they don't want to talk about it? Again, um, your job is to go to them. Because remember, even the scripture we read last week says, if you go to them um, and they hear you, you gain the brother back. So the implication is, everybody ain't trying to hear you. Some people, <laughs> some people. No, I do, because I, 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 I kind of, I'm trying to do the thing the Bible way. You go to some people that are like, oh, you're tripping. <laughs> you need to get over that. I said, no, I probably do, but I'm going to get over it after I come to you. Because now, I'm see, the Bible said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. It takes humility to confront somebody. You wronged me, and I didn't like it. So, I need you to tell you about it. What you going to do about it? I ain't doing nothing. Okay, I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> because I've done my part. I can't make you repent. I can't make you make it right. And so, I'm out. And I'm not going to come back and let you do it again. Somebody else can do it, but you can't. I like these questions. 
Oh, Lord, they're coming now. <laughs> okay. Y'all doing good. Um, Pastor, how do you deal with a family member like your mom? Oh, boy. How do you deal with a family member like your mom that you honor but is always bringing up offenses or unknowingly try to aff or unknowingly try to offend you? How do you deal with a family member like your mom that you honor but is always bringing up offenses? Okay, um, you, you, you say, Mom, with all due respect, um, Jesus, put it on Jesus. <laughs> you know, you're talking to your mama. <laughs> you're just going to come over there and talk to your, tell your mom you need to get this right. You know, put it on Jesus. You know, Jesus said, uh, I did this. I mean, my mom used to talk about Anyway. She, she came around, though. I got her to come around. But, I, Mom, you know, the word says, Jesus said that, you know, uh, if you have offense or art with anybody, you need to go to them and make it right. And so, um, you're bringing up offenses. Um, and maybe you, you said unknowingly, maybe. And you don't, you may don't, you may, you know, I hadn't said much about how you're just making me feel. But I need to let you know how, how this is affecting me. Because Jesus said, if you put your mama, daddy, children ahead of me, you can't be my disciple. So this is one of those areas where you got to tell them the truth and, uh, and then let Jesus deal with them. Okay. All right, let's see. How do you handle offenses with authority, church, or job? Same way. Who, he didn't say you go to them if they're not in authority. I remember one time when I was, I, I was working for this, the colonel, and uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, yeah. Some of my fans now, so I... You know, he, okay, if you watch it, you don't want to, you don't talk about you. They love me now. But uh, I told him, I said, look, I said, sir, um, you, you, you want me to be a certain way, that's not me. And I'm giving you all I got. If there ain't enough, you need to go ahead and find somebody else. <laughs> you know, the other way you go to authority, and most of them would appreciate it. Just come tell them the truth. This ain't work. Okay. Because um, now I wasn't a screamer and a cusser and a throwing stuff around her. You know. And they was like that. And they expect me to, you too calm. You too nice to them. I said, well, you, you, we got the highest rating you ever got. You don't want to get promoted. Not me. Hello? And so uh, they didn't like all that because I was calm. I was cool. I've been there back in my office. Casting out devils. And so they wanted me to be a certain way. I said, that's not me. That's not my style. That's not how I do it. Mm -hmm. You want results, right? You know, you talk to them. Anyway, maybe I went all over the place with that. How do you handle offensive with authority? You go to them. Remember I said in, in the message, sometimes people are offended unconsciously. You don't know. And, I and I'll tell y'all, I'll tell y'all. I'll tell y'all. If I offend you in any kind of way, you come to me. I had a lady come to me last Wednesday. Pastor, I was offended by something you said. I don't know what I say. And she told me, no, really. She told me what I say. And I said, oh, wow. I said, well, I didn't mean that. She said, oh, okay. Done. Over. Let's go get a hamburger. <laughs> no, and she was free. And I was like, oh, wow. I didn't like, I can't, that ain't what I meant. I didn't do all of that. I just, I said, no, I, I would not think about that. Okay. All right. Okay, I think I have one more. Unless it, is there another one out here? Okay, got one back there. Come on, Henry. That's, I'm not offended. That's it. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm going to read this one. So, so is it wrong to just act like you don't see that person? <laughs> so is it, is it, 
Is it wrong to act like you don't see that person that offended you? What do y'all say? Yes or no? Yeah? You say yeah? You say no? Is it okay? How many say it's okay to act like you don't see them? Raise your hand. It's okay. Okay. How many you say no? It's not okay. You, you, okay, raise your hand. Wow. So okay, all y'all that just raise your hand, you're saying you shouldn't act like you don't see them. You should go. You still approach them. Okay. 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 What if? What if? Okay. What if? What if you're at the grocery store, right? What if you're at the grocery store, and and it, they 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 in the, in the aisle with the rice, they don't see you, but you like oh, <laughs> is that wrong? How many say that's wrong? Okay, I need to repent then. I need to, I need to repent. I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I did that. I did that. I'm like, I ain't trying. And well, it wasn't, it wasn't like, it was it wasn't like I didn't want to see him. Huh? It's not the time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> It wasn't like I was scared of them. And I didn't want to. I just like, yeah, it wasn't. It, I ain't trying to do that now. I'm just trying to get me some skins and some hot sauce and get my stuff and hit to the express line. That's all. I, I ain't trying to have no conversation. I do that sometimes with, anyway. How many of y'all do that sometimes with, it ain't about offense. You're like, I ain't trying to talk right now. Okay, okay, thank you. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But, okay, but, but. Is it, is it wrong to just act like you don't see that person that offended you? It's, well, I think the timing thing is true, too. But if you have not confronted, it's only going to eat at you. So you got to confront. You got to confront. You, you, you got to confront. Man, it's so much power. And I just you, but it's, you feel so better, so much better. To, it's, I don't know what it is. It's, I don't know, Jesus built something in that thing, in that confront thing. I just found I got to confront some folks today. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Here's the, huh? Here's the last one. You bring it up the rear. Okay, so we were talking about confronting. Mm-hmm. At, and then you were also, well, God says um, to be, you can be angry, but sin not. Mm-hmm. So once you have confronted the person, um, but you still feel angry, are you cut off? Because the feelings are going to still be there sometimes. Are you? So, I mean, are you cut off from the blessings or from oh. God hearing your prayers? Are, are mm-hmm. you hindered? No, because... No, because feelings... <laughs> no, because you acted on what the Word says. You confront it. Feelings, that's in your soul realm. And and sometimes the soul takes a while to catch up to the spirit. Yeah, and I mean I take uh, some stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes sometimes it takes a while for the mind to catch up with that forgiveness thing. <laughs> you got to keep reminding yourself. No, I forgave them. I forgave them. Your blood pressure two hundred over. S- <laughs> I forgave them. I forgave them. Praise the Lord. I forgave them. And sometimes you just got to counsel yourself. I forgave him. I forgave Make up a song. I forgave. I forgave. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. So, and that's, and that's faith because forgiveness is all about faith. Forgiveness is all about faith. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you're feeling catch up. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. So it's about acting on the word. All right. Well, I think that's it. Huh? You have another question? It didn't show up? I, I have one more? Where is it at? Maybe my, maybe my computer, my, my pad blocked it. Maybe it was too...
Okay, here it comes. Okay, this is the Ilana's question, everybody. <laughs> oh, no? You don't know? Okay, I'm just messing with you. Is your phone number uh No. <laughs> oh. Okay. What if someone offended you, but the offender does not remember the offense? You know, that's kind of hard because... Because now they'll turn on you. What you talking about? No, 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 no. Okay, no, you, you did this. Oh, oh. Or, oh, you still got a problem with that? What if they don't remember? <laughs> you help them remember. <laughs> it was on a Thursday. <laughs> it was partly cloudy. And it was about 7 o'clock, yeah. No, no, you, you help them remember because it's important for you to, to, to confront and release. And then if they still act like they don't remember, you say, okay, fine, all right. And now, you have, now you're dealing with a dishonest person and, you know, you don't give them another opportunity to uh, offend you. Okay, is that it? All right. Well, let's give everybody a, yourself a hand. I like that. That was pretty cool. Okay. All right, that's our new thing for Wednesday night. So, sometimes y'all, uh, yeah, you know, preaching and teaching on the fence is, 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 that's one of the things, sometimes Deb said, boy, you need to teach certain things at least once a quarter just to keep it. That's one of those things that you, you do because everybody at work, family, church, wherever you go, wherever there's people, you have to, you're going to get offended. You have an opportunity for offense. All right. Okay. Well, I'm not offended about receiving an offering. Okay. Let's go ahead and um, please call me when you can. Okay. Thank you.